In this video, I'm going to show you how to pull up your patients and personal planner with your selected patient, how to enter a medical history, a treatment code, and a note. So we'll go ahead and get started. I'm logged in as a student. Here are your buttons. We're going to choose the little brown book, personal planner, and double click. We're going to go to the second tab, assigned patients, and it will always be empty when you first uh, go to it. To see your assigned patients, you have to click on the little search button right here. This is a common thing for students to say, I do not have any patients and they've forgotten to click on that button. So as a student, I have two patients assigned to me. One of them is my typodont. Every student as a freshman has a typodont created for them. A typodont is a patient that generates no fees and is not part of our reporting system. So you can use it to practice and it's often used in classes for assignments. You may already have a person assigned to you that you will be entering treatment on or at least um, findings and medical histories on. It, this is a real chart. You are in production. So make sure with your real life person that you only enter accurate data. But today we're going to go ahead and choose our type of dot. For the incoming freshman for this year, the last name of your type of dot is DCG for the Dental College of Georgia. Prior to this year, the last names were CDM, so you might hear faculty or other students referring to this as your CDM patient. We're going to highlight the typodont, right mouse click, and say select patient. Before I do that, notice that down here at the bottom of the screen, there's no name, no identifying information, just a bunch of empty cells. Once I select my patient, in the bottom of the window, you'll see the patient name, age, sex, and the chart number. Typically, chart numbers are just numbers, but in your typodont, the chart number will be the same as your provider number. And you need to learn this provider number. You'll be asked it, you'll, you'll use it for the next four years. All right, I've got my patient selected and we want to enter the electronic health record. So I'm going to close that window and click on the tooth with a little blue circle, electronic health record. We're going to go to forms first. We're going to pull up the form we want by clicking on the folder with the green plus on the right. We're going to scroll down to med history. Med History has four different pages. We're going to start off with the top page and by clicking on this little up arrow, we can have it fill the entire window and it gives us more viewing space. When you first start entering the Med History and the training on how to do your Med History will be by faculty, but in this case, we're going to skip the information in the very top because you'll come back to it. There are different types of data fields and there's no way to know until you become familiar with the form or you actually click on the field right next to a question. So in this case, physician's name and address is a large text field. Date of last doctor visit is a short text field. When we come down to some of these problem areas, when I click first on asthma, these are yes, no. And if I click yes, in this case, asthma has been marked to create an alert. So the alert will come up here at the top under medical alert. So any of the items in the medical history that have alerts tied to them will appear in this field. I'll continue, no, and I'm going to try using my keyboard. Sometimes that works, yep. So I can 
enter rapidly, you will have a printed form that goes along with a medical history that your patient will have filled out ahead of time and that will allow you to more rapidly enter the data in this form. You have long text fields for additional information. I'm going to skip a bunch of these. They're all the same. They're all yes, no. And if I go right down here to neurological problems, no, no, yes, no, no. So you'll notice that epilepsy also has triggered an alert which will appear right up here. Oh, I have it listed as a medical problem. Um, new form, we have different ways of setting up our alerts. If I continue scrolling all the way down to the bottom, I have some that have a little eye next to them indicating that if you say yes, it's going to ask for additional information. What and number of years for cigarettes. For allergies, if you say yes, it's going to ask you to give a description. These fields will be changed by the time you're actually completing this. Now, the minute you entered one piece of data, this signature required box became red. If I try to leave this form without signing it, it's going to prompt me for a signature. So I'm going to say I want to capture the sig signature now. In the clinics, you have a signature pad that you will hand to the patient and the patient will sign the form. Vital signs, you will enter the patient's blood pressure, systolic 100, diastolic 70, etc. Again, this whole form will be completed at the direction of your faculty member. Head and neck forms have a little bit more cues as to what kind of questions they're going to be. So you'll see that some are yes, no. Some are going to be number fields. This has an MM. So if I try to put text in there, it won't take it. But if I enter a number, it will. Mandibular direction during opening is a drop down where you make one selection. Excursive movements, if you say yes, you get a checklist where you could indicate multiple options. Once you have completed filling out your medical history form, you can check the in progress tab and see that the information that you have entered into it has entered down into the health summary so that someone could quickly look and see what were the key elements that you found when completing their med history. Now we want to go to the treatment history tab and enter a code for today's treatment. All office visits need to have some kind of billable code entered. To enter the billable code for today's appointment, and this is not how you're going to enter all of your plan treatment, but for this visit, you're going to go to the folder with the green plus at the top. It's going to open a new tab up here called chart add, but we want to make sure it's set for dental treatment and we want to choose the D0150, the very first one, Comprehensive Oral Evaluation. Enter as planned. It's in blue, which means it needs faculty approval. When you go over to the Treatment History tab, you will see that it is now entered here as planned again in blue. As soon as we did that, this little uh, chart number box also turned turquoise. If you click on it, you'll see that this is where the faculty will approve any treatment that you've added. We're not going to approve it right now. We also want to enter a note and we prefer attached notes. And the note is attached to 
the treatment, the billable treatment for that office visit or for the primary treatment that you're performing on a given day. Right mouse, add treatment note. You could type in free text, but to make it easy and more precise, we have some built-in text for you to use. So if you click on the little ellipses right here next to code, <clears throat> click on the plus next to 000, zero, zero did I say enough? Exams and referrals choose the comprehensive oral evaluation. If I double click, it puts the name right down here at the bottom that shows you cumulatively all the text you're adding. We also want to click on the plus to expand it and we want to choose these first two fields of text. So now I'm going to say OK and you'll see that all of this text has entered into the note. You can modify that text, you can add spacing, you can change it, you can add your own additional note. And when you say OK, and your note has entered into the chart, it's also displaying in blue because it too needs faculty approval. Again, if I click on the little aqua colored chart number box, you'll see that the note is here for faculty to approve.